Good morning, everyone. And thank you, everyone, for assembling for this incredible celebration, this historic day in the long history of St. Augustine's University, another milestone for the miracle on Oakwood Avenue. My name is Joel Brown. I'm an anchor at ABC 11 Eyewitness News. I am a resident of this city that this distinguished institution was founded in way back in 1867. So it is my honor to join with you all this morning for the investiture of Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail. You can have a seat. At this time, we want to recognize some of the special audience members in our midst this morning. First, the family and special guests of Dr. McPhail. We have college and university delegates, delegates of the Episcopal Church and other clergy and community faith leaders are here. Elected leaders who are with us this morning. Our distinguished board of trustees, alumni and friends of this university, we thank you as well. University officers, deans, and student leaders, our team of committee members who plan this very special event, we thank you. And of course, our wonderful St. Aug students, faculty, and staff who are the engine of this great university, we thank all of you this morning. Okay, offering opening remarks for this celebration is none other than St. Augustine's University Board Chair, the Honorable, the Honorable Justice James E.C. Perry. Thank you, Brother Brown, for that uh, auspicious uh, uh, introduction. Good morning. Good morning. I have a a uh, responsibility here to make some opening remarks and uh, I'm prepared to do that. Uh, St. Augustine's University, as you know, has a very long and illustrious history. It was, it was built, started by the Episcopal Church to uh, educate and to develop former enslaved people, that's us. <laughs> St. Aug has, has emerged as a significant engine for learning. Today, we honor that history. Today we honor our founders. We do, we have done so by making a significant investment in our leadership, Dr. McPhail. And in so doing, we made a significant investment in our future. This investiture is a milestone event and one in which has been delayed for conditions beyond our control. You know, the most important job of a board of trustees is to select a president. Normally what happens, uh, you select the president and you soon after that you have the investiture and you hope you made a wise decision. <laughs> but that is not the case here because we had over a year of her leadership and we know without fear of contradiction that we made the right choice. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm used to going to investigators for judges and we have levity, so I'm going to evoke some levity here, but it's, it's thought provoking. It's a story about uh, a bull, a cow, was standing at the bottom of this magnificent tree, and at the top sat a falcon nest at the top of the tree. And, and up walked a turkey. The turkey said to the bull, boy, I wish I could go flap there. And the, and the, and the cow said, well, well, you can. He said, well, what, would, what do I need to do? Well, he said, tomorrow, I'm going to drop my dung, and all you have to do is eat it, and you can fly up there. So the next day, the cow came, and it followed the, the, the cow's instructions. The turkey came, followed the cow's instructions. 
And he immediately flew up to the top of the, of the tree. I said, wow. I said, this is great. And the next day, he came tumbling down. And he said to the cow, I thought you said I could fly to the top of the tree. The cow said, well, I told you you could fly to the top of the tree. BS will get you there, but it won't keep you. And it won't. Now we all know Dr. Dr. McPhail is very articulate. I mean, she has she has she has it all. She can smooth, but but she's the person of substance, a real substance, real leadership, real heart. And please do not misinterpret her sweetness for weakness. I'm sure you know that by now. <laughs> but that she is not. President Christine Johnson McPhail is, is a leader, is a proven leader, and we're honored to have our occasion. Please welcome Reverend Dr. Paul Smith to the stage. Good morning. For one who has known your president for less than 40 days, it's kind of strange that I am here, except that she is a person who walks the faith, believes in what God has called her to do, and thus you are here to celebrate the, her installation. I met her at a significant occasion that's hosted by the Washington National Cathedral. It's HBCU Sunday. And I had an opportunity to meet Dr. Carter and Dr. McPhail, and we became very friends. And then before I knew it, I was involved in all kinds of things. <laughs> and, and so I came here to do a lecture, which I did the other day, but then I made the mistake of going into her office. <laughs> and of course, she had another assignment uh, for me. So we all know why we are here. But I'd like us to, uh, as Howard Thurman would say, is just to is together for just a few moments. On your programs and for the search committee, you know all of the factual minimums of Dr. Christine McPhail. I'm here to talk about the meaningful maximums of Dr. Christine McPhail. We are in a very difficult period in, in this country. And... Uh, so she's coming to this university at a very critical time in the life of this country, in the life of this, this wonderful institution. So you are the people that she will depend upon. If you're not prepared to be with her, to join with her, in all the things that she has, because she is a visionary. And so the meaningful maximums about our incoming president, that first she is a child of God, she is a visionary, she believes that God orders her steps in his word. She she has a vision that comes from the deep. And for those of you who were at the, uh, the lecture the, the other day, you know, one of Dr. King's favorite poems was, was where the, the per Wait, let me just tell, tell you what it is. And I think that represents Dr. Uh, McPhail. It says, I'm tired of sailing my little boat far inside the harbor bar. 
I'd like to go up where the big ships float, out on the deep where the great ones are. And should my frail craft prove too slight for storms that sweep those billows o'er, I'd rather go down in the stirring fight than be drowsed to death by the sheltered shore. St. Augustine is about to move away from the sheltered shores out on the deep where the great ones are. And for all of those Morehouse people here, if there are a few people here, they remember Dr. Benjamin Elijah. So it's so important for us to remember why we are here, what this occasion is. And this is an occasion where if you're not going out into the deep waters, you're going nowhere. This is a time in the, the, the history of this country and of this great u- university for us to launch out into the deep, to, 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 to take on the hard issues, the issues that no one else wants to deal with, to, to, to fly with the eagles, you might say, to, to, to sense the presence of the living God as Dr. Christine McPhail takes the leadership. But she can't do this by herself. She has to have the support and the confidence of everyone that is here. So we're caught in a sense, she is caught, this university is caught in a sense between living at a time where intelligent people are being silenced so that ignorant people won't be accept, can be accept, accepted, won't be accepted. Let me say that again. You're, she is coming at a time where intelligent people are being silenced so that ignorant people won't be affected. White fragilities, all of those things are happening now. The pandemic, uh, difficulties with racial relations. But she comes because she comes armored by the God of her life, fulfilling what God has called her to do. So let me close with, uh, for you, Dr. McPhail, and this body here, my mentor, the person that, that really saved my life was Dr. Howard Thurman. And so Dr. McPhail, one of his most famous quotes that speaks to the fact of your being here now. He said, so I'll say to you, don't let anybody or anything keep you from doing what God has called you to do. Nothing, because everything that you do is controlled by what therm- I love is this, this image, the thermostat of your spirit. Don't let anything control your thermostat because whoever controls your thermostat controls your temperature. Reverend Smith, we thank you for that, setting the momentousness of this occasion for us. So St. Augustine's, as Reverend Smith put it, as we prepare to set sail from these shallow shores and into the deep, seems like the perfect time for a moment of prayer. So join me in welcoming to the stage the Reverend Hershey Millett Stevens for our invocation. Good morning. I'm going to invite you to find a posture of prayer that is comfortable for you. And let us, as Thurman says, center down in this moment. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know 
that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all our hearts are open, all desires known, we pause this moment, we pause this day of celebration to acknowledge you, to call you into this place and this moment, to give thanks to you for all that you have done for each of us to bring us to this day. For you are the God of every age. And throughout your epic of salvation, you have sent phenomenal women of great intellect to reveal your grace and glory in every time. You empowered our mother Hagar, who was the first to name God in holy scriptures. She called you El Roy, the God who sees me. You endowed Rachel with wisdom and willfulness to thwart the desires of those who would impede the progress of God's people. You filled Miriam with joy as she danced on the banks of the Red Sea after freeing your people from oppression. Tamar, you blessed with daring, making her willing to take risk, believing and trusting that something new, something wonderful could happen if we would just allow God to breach the walls. In Ruth, you offer us an exemplar of loyalty, a model of unselfish love, even at the expense of personal preservation. And through Esther, you remind us that perhaps each of us was born for such a time as this. You raised up a voice from the South and one of St. Augustine's own daughters, Anna Julia Cooper, who made our charge by writing. The cause of freedom is not the cause of a race or a sect, a party or a class. It is the cause of humankind, the very birthright of humanity. So we come to you today God of unchangeable power and eternal light, evoking your Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirits of our foremothers and asking your blessing for another woman filled with your spirit who has come to reimagine not only the reality for herself as our foremothers did, but the reality of her people. Amen. Now it is time to bring you greetings. And this portion of our celebration, it gives leaders a chance to share proclamations, exaltations, and encouragement with President Christine Johnson McPhail. So we have a list of people. I'm going to go down the list one by one, and you can come to the stage at that time. First, the Honorable Deborah Ross, Congresswoman Deborah Ross, and representing Congresswoman Ross this morning is Kimberly Moore. nothing like being the first one. It is truly my honor to be with you this morning and to share in this very special event. On behalf of Congresswoman Ross, I'm Kimberly Moore, Director of Civic Engagement, and would like to just share a letter from the Congresswoman to Dr. McPhail. Dear Dr. McPhail, on behalf of North Carolina's second congressional district, I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations on your installation as the 13th president of St. Augustine's University. This is an exciting moment 
following your first year of gracefully leading the university into its next chapter. Although bittersweet, due to the passing of your husband, former President Dr. Irving McPhail, I know that this occasion will allow you to reflect on your successes thus far and look ahead towards a bright future. St. Augustine's University and the Raleigh community are fortunate to benefit from your leadership as we all reimagine St. Augustine's University. Since your arrival in 2021, you have already made a tremendous impact on the campus and the surrounding areas by orchestrating an increase in student enrollment, welcoming federal funding and community grants to support students and university facilities, as well as promoting opportunities for learning and educational engagement, you are ensuring that St. Augustine's University is well prepared for the years ahead. It is an honor to serve our community alongside you, and I'm grateful for the relationship that we have formed during recent years. I sincerely look forward to continuing our work together to support the students and neighbors of St. Augustine's University. It gives me great hope that the futures of many young people are in your hands, strong and caring. If I can ever be of assistance to you and the university, and I'll say our entire office of 20 people are at your service. Please contact us. Congresswoman Ross looks forward to continuing the celebration with you as she um, improves and this celebration will continue. Very truly yours, Deborah K. Ross, member of Congress. Kimberly, thank you and give our regards to the Congresswoman. Uh, next to bring us greetings, Dr. John Larkins, St. Augustine's University National Alumni Association. Good morning. Distinguished guests, trustees, uh, Dr. McPhail. As president of the National Alumni Association for St. Augustine's University, I would like to offer up congratulations to our 13th president and thank God for the opportunity to be here today. St. Augustine's University has thousands of alumni in various locations around the United States and spread around the world. And we look forward with great anticipation and expectations. <laughs> um, for, on your leadership in making St. Augustine's an outstanding institution for academic development and achievement, a university of choice for students from diverse backgrounds, especially minority students. Having had the opportunity to have several conversations with you over the past several months, I can discern a strong sense of commitment, a leader who thinks through the process and a university president with the requisite skill set to sculpture and structure St. Augustine's University to be sustainable and thrive in the future. The Falcon family of self has blazed the path to today. My greetings from the colleges and universities of the Anglican Communion and the Association of Episcopal Colleges actually comes from two boards where she is already a participant. You have a large family of 160 Anglican colleges and universities globally who are with you, eager to take part in your task of reimagining here at our well-beloved St. Augustine's University. My greeting comes in four words. Fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> and Godspeed. Thank you.
Buckle up, folks. You've been warned. Next giving us greetings is Dr. Paulette Dillard, president of Shaw University. Good morning. It is my honor and privilege to bring greetings on behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and students of Shaw University. St. Augustine's University and Shaw University share a rich history and a unique legacy. Not only in our city, but in the state of North Carolina, as well as the nation. We stand as two of the oldest historically black colleges and universities. In the Southern United States, 1865 and 1867. That has great significance because you see, that was the end of the enslavement of our people at that time. And the responsibility that comes with the leadership of institutions such as ours weighs heavy as we remember the sacrifices hopes, dreams, and aspirations of our ancestors in creating for us the halls of education as the pathway to a, an abundant future. I am reminded of the words of Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. If we have the courage and the tenacity of our forebears who stood firmly like a rock against the lash of slavery, we will find a way to do for our day what they did for theirs. That is the charge and the drive that I see in my sister president, Dr. Christine McPhail. Thank you, St. Augustine's, for recognizing this and choosing a leader with that kind of love and commitment. It is one of the customs of the United Negro College Fund that whenever there's a new sitting president, a president that's already a member gets to introduce her. I had the unique pleasure to do the introduction of Dr. Christine McPhail to the body when you appointed her as the 13th president of St. Augustine's. She and I serve on a number of other organizations and boards, the Cooperating Raleigh Colleges, the board of the CIAA, and the NCICU, and many other organizations represented here. But one of my greatest compliments is that I am often mistaken <laughs> for Dr. McPhail. <laughs> it has now happened so often to the both of us that we've just started answering and going along and not even bothering to correct. And that's because I have no problem being thought of as Dr. Christine MacPhail. Now, most of you think that St. Augustine's and Shaw 
are fierce rivals. We're actually friendly competitors. <laughs> However, I'm gonna go on record to say since she's been on president, since she's been president here, you've bested Shaw on the gridiron, and you've bested Shaw on the basketball court, but payback is coming. <laughs> You've, her, you've read her bio. You know that she is impeccably qualified for the work that she has been called to do. What I commit to you, Dr. MacPhail, is to be available to meet you in the clearing, the one that Toni Morrison describes in the novel Beloved. You see, the role of president can be lonely and a weighted experience. I understand that and will always be across the way to offer a listening ear, share a meal, and cry a tear if needed. Congratulations, Dr. MacPhail. And I can't wait to see what else you will do as you lead St. Augustine's. Dr. Dillard, thank you. It is all sisterly president affection until it comes to basketball or football. Dr. Dillard, thank you. Our next greeter is Dr. Kimberly Beatty. Chancellor of Metropolitan Community College. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Beatty, and I'm here to give tribute in three different ways. So I'm wearing three different hats. I started to bring three hats, and I'm, English is my discipline, so I thought maybe I would give a, a little bit of a show and metaphor, but I'll stick to my script. So I first want to give you greetings as convener of the President's Roundtable. The President's Roundtable is an organization of Black CEOs of the community colleges across the country. I'm serving as convener. And the President's Roundtable has been committed to the development of current and future black CEOs. I tell you that because over the years, Dr. McPhail has served as a mentor, faculty, and advisor to the organization and the Lakin Institute, which is our professional development, intensive professional development for future black presidents. With nearly 90% of its members who have participated in the Lakin Institute becoming a president, it is a testament to the contr contributions like Dr. McPhail. Dr. McPhail has left an unduplicated fingerprint on the lives of many in the President's Roundtable. So second, I bring you greetings. I guess these are just my greetings. <laughs> I'm an author. Dr. McPhail is the reason that I'm an author. She always told us, and I know there's a couple of her McPhailian children in here, that you must be better than me. That meant write on relevant topics that address the social injustices and real issues in higher education, especially for black people in higher education. She pushed me and many others to write, and so I did. I now have six publications and was fortunate to co-author a book with her that you see in her bio. It's available on Amazon. <laughs> Third, I bring you greetings uh, from Metropolitan Community College, my board of trustees, our students and faculty. We are so pleased to support a woman of your stature. But I'm going to make this personal again. There is absolutely no way I would be in my seat if it were not for Dr. McPhail coming into my life. 
In May of 1996, I interviewed with her at Cypress College. That's how far we go back for an English faculty position. She hired me and then fell in love and left California and moved to Baltimore. <laughs> I know you know how that story went with Dr. Irving McPhail. Her words of wisdom in that interview stuck with me at Cypress College and I thrived. In 2006, I moved to Virginia to take a position of Dean of Languages, Mathematics, and Sciences, and she kept sending me these little notes like, Kim, you need to come on home and get your doctorate. See, Dr. McPhail had established a unique program. It was, well, it's still unique, I believe, a doctorate program at Morgan State University, my alma mater. No, she said, well, you need to call them and tell them that Christine said, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm not doing all of that. I did, <laughs> but I did follow up. And as it turned out, there was a great position that was a great fit. I competed for it and was the Associate Vice Chancellor for Student Success. But it was that job that set me on a path that I didn't know I would end up on as I am today. I've lost my place. So, on behalf of the President's Roundtable, the Lakin graduates, all of the graduates from the community college programs and the people that you have developed, if you're here, stand with me as we all say thank you. Thank you for developing that program at Morgan State. Thank you for teaching all of us. Thank you for your commitment to all of us. Thank you for the passion that you bring to the work. And thank you for the scholarship that you have contributed to the Academy. And finally, thank you for being in our lives. We are forever grateful. Dr. Kimberly Beatty, thank you. Next to bring us greetings, Dr. Hope Williams, president of North Carolina Independent Colleges and universities. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. On behalf of North Carolina Independent Colleges and Universities and our 35 other independent college and university presidents, some of whom are here today on the platform and in the audience, Dr. McPhail, it is our honor, along with our 66,000 employees and 85,000 students in our great state, to congratulate you and to rejoice with you on this great day of celebration for you and for St. Augustine's University. Private higher education institutions in North Carolina, including St. Augustine's and our four additional HBCUs, private HBCUs, and our public ones as well, our three colleges for women, and our one two-year college, along with all our other liberal arts, comprehensive, and research universities play a very critical role in the lives of our students and our families and in the educational, cultural, and economic growth of our state. And we also have tremendous partnerships with our public sector counterparts. Our sector is steeped in history back to the 1700s and 1800s. The core values and strengths, the transformational power of St. Augustine's remains the same as it was when the institution was founded in 1867. But St. Augs has ad adapted over the years to meet the, days, the needs of today's students, including the reimagining of the university for the future. But you still educate students in small classes, but now with a global perspective. You know students by name and support them from the time of their applications throughout their college experience and as alumni throughout their lives. You have highly dedicated faculty and staff who are committed to the education, leadership development, and lifelong success of students. 
President McPhail, your vision, your strength of leadership, both have already been evident from the start, as demonstrated by that 10-year high enrollment growth that St. Augustine's has attained. The grants that have been awarded, including the $400,000 grant from the U.S. Economic Development Administration to study the feasibility of preserving the beloved St. Agnes Hospital, plus a significant increase in alumni giving. Let's give them a hand for that. <laughs> Newly formed academic centers for innovation and entrepreneurship, health and wellness, social justice, global competitiveness, and science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, STEAM, are supplemented by the establishment of the first HBCU women's rowing team in the country. And the, camp <laughs> and the campus is hosting of the first UA sanctioned cycling race at an HBCU. In <laughs> NCICU and all our presidents congratulate you, Dr. McPhail, and the St. Augs community on these early accomplishments, even before your inauguration. And we know that there will be many more innovations to come. St. Augustine's University has long been and is today a major university presence in, North Carolina, presence in North Carolina and across the country. And all of us in private higher education look forward to working alongside you as together we ensure that our independent colleges and universities remain an affordable option as the right choice and the right fit for young men and women, as well as our adult students from around the world. Our warmest congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Williams, thank you. I want to take a moment of uh, MC prerogative here. I uh, buzzed by a couple of very important parts of our program earlier. So let's go back. We'll take a pause in our greetings and then we'll pick back up. But I don't want to cheat you this morning from some of St. Aug's most talented artists. So let's go back. If Alfred Davis is ready and if the chamber singers are ready, let's start with our national anthem from Alfred Davis. can blame me for that hiccup in the uh, in the program they were there was a run through yesterday and uh, I was literally doing the news at the time so I missed that 
But like I said, I am glad I went back. Thank you to the St. Augustine's University Chamber Singers. Thank you to Alfred Davis for our national anthem as well. Let's continue on with our greetings and bring up Mr. Zachary Barco, class of 2023, our SGA president. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to our Board of Trustees, to Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, to the dignitaries, to the faculty and staff, to my Falcon peers, and to the families and friends of Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail. I am Zachary Barco. I am the 2022-2023 student body president elect. And on behalf of the student body here at St. Augustine's University, we would like to congratulate Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail on her inauguration to officially be the 13th president of our illustrious institution. Now, with the short amount of time that Dr. McPhail has been with us, she has already uh, accomplished a multiplicity and variety of different things that will and have already benefited our student body at St. Augustine's University. Just yesterday, it was actually announced that we will be partnering up with the NBFA, which is the National Black Farmers Association, to teach our students about the importance of uh, black farmers and black agriculture and even help them earn certificates and diversify their already stellar skill sets. Now, this partnership would not have been possible without the help of Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail and her vision of reimagining our university to be something greater and to help our students strive for greater things. With a fearless leader like Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, our students stand a chance at long-term success and our lovely university will be celebrated into a bright future of prosperity full of rewarding opportunities. Now, Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, when things seem to get rough and when the burdens seem to get heavy, just know that Falcon Country will be the shield you will lean upon. We got your back. <laughs> and again, on behalf of the student body at St. Augustine's University, uh, we'd like to congratulate you, and we look forward to the long future of success with you as our captain. Thank you. Falcons got your back, Dr. McPhail. Thank you. Next to give us greetings, Dr. Marnie Arkenberg, moderator of the Faculty Assembly and Associate Professor of Psychology. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> no, pull it down. Okay. The faculty at St. Augustine's University is so pleased to welcome our new president, Christine Johnson McPhail. It's not often that faculty have the opportunity to formally welcome a new president, especially one whose background is so similar to our own. Dr. McPhail has been a faculty member and she's been an author, she's been an administrator. She's someone who truly understands the intricacies of the, of the academy. We've been gifted with Dr. McPhail's transformational, inclusive, collaborative leadership style, and we look forward to working with her and her team as we all reimagine St. Augustine's University. So, Dr. McPhail, on behalf of the faculty, welcome to our academy. Welcome to St. Augustine's University. We're so glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arkenberg. Our next greeter is Mr. Demarcus Williams, Associate Vice President of Global Marketing and Communications here at St. Augustine's. Demarcus. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. To Dr. McPhail, members of the Board of Trustees, the McPhail family, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends of the university, as well as our distinguished executive cabinet, I bring you greetings on behalf of the staff at St. Augustine's University. In my seven years, some other time, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change we seek. By her example, 
Dr. McPhail has shown that she is the one that St. Augustine's University has been waiting for and has inspired us to follow her lead. Since her arrival in 2021, her impact as our new leader includes a 10-year high in fall enrollment, record-breaking alumni giving, and an outpour of federal funding to cover student account balances. In addition, we have secured grants of 499,000 and 400,000 to repurpose and preserve Hermitage Hall and St. Agnes Hospital, respectively. Dr. McPhail's vision for reimagining St. Augustine's University involves building upon our historic legacy and moving St. Augustine's University to new levels of excellence. With the implementation of proven change models in higher education, Dr. McPhail is mobilizing our campus community to focus on the wildly important goals of student success and university sustainability. And she has encouraged us all to deliver on our mission, vision, and core values with a cadence of accountability. It is John Maxwell who said, we cannot become what we need by remaining what we are. Dr. McPhail has demonstrated a commitment to bringing transformation to St. Augustine's University with the building of centers of innovation and with the development of its people. Through the implementation of Emergenetics testing and the commitment to making the university whole in every way, financially, and her engagement of all members of the campus community, Dr. McPhail is uniting us as one university. This could not be made more evident than through the listening sessions that took place on campus earlier this month. At each session, Dr. McPhail listened to the concerns of faculty, staff, and students for the purpose of discovering ways to collectively move the university forward. In each session, she stated that everyone's voice matters. As a result of those meetings, she quickly, decisively, and permanently added our academic deans to the university's extended cabinet to ensure that the voices of both faculty and staff were better represented. This resulted in one of the most productive and exciteful leadership meetings of the year. Through her leadership, Dr. McPhail is, uni is unifying the university to work collaboratively to reach its goals more efficiently and has empowered members of her staff, such as myself, to reach our full potential. As preachers say, as I close, <laughs> it is John Maxwell who also said, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. If you have ever been in a meeting with Dr. McPhail or simply engaged in conversation with her on any level, there is no statement that more accurately describe, describes her leadership than this. In my first meeting with Dr. McPhail, her statement to me was, Mr. Williams, I want you to dream. Our meeting lasted over an hour and my notebook was full of plans that outlined her vision, not just for marketing and communications, but for St. Augustine's University. In just a year's time, I have nearly seen everything that she has shared with me come to fruition. We, we are witnessing a reimagining of St. Augustine's University but we are also seeing a manifestation of the prophetic voices of our ancestors, previous administrators, and stakeholders who all saw the vision of a better university, but were not given the opportunity to see it come to pass, including our dearly beloved 12th president, Dr. Irving Presley McPhail. By divine providence, God has allowed Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail and her executive team to be the vessels to deliver on the promises made by the lineage of SAU leadership. Thank you, Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, for giving me and the campus community a reason not just to dream, 
but to believe again. Ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's what a vice president of global marketing sounds like. To Marcus Williams, let the church say amen. Last but, last but certainly not least, uh, the Honorable Dr. James West, Commissioner, Wake County Commissioner. Dr. West, please give us your greetings. I guess all I can say, well, good morning. <laughs> but what I was about to say is, well, well done. I, I truly was, I guess, overwhelmed, transformed at the young man's comments, and that St. Augustine is in good hands. Um, on behalf of the Wake County Board of Commissioners, we are very pleased to be a part of this. I'm especially pleased to be a part of this because I've had kind of a very special relationship uh, with St. Augustine's College over the years, going back to Dr. Robinson and down to um, President Christine McPhail. And I truly believe that we all should focus on hope and enlightenment because what I have heard and looking at the plans that was part of the process related to the revision of peace, I also served on um, two uh, search committees. Uh, one was with um, the late Dr. Maffeo, our president, and the other was with our current president, Dr. Christine McPhail. And I think we're going to see something beyond visionary leadership. I think we're going to see transformation. And I'm just foolish enough to believe that um, the invented future that I hear here and the belief that um, a historically black college, especially our private one, one led by uh, Dr. Dillard, the other by Dr. Christine Maffeo, and we're going to see some great things happening. I guess one of the, I'm off script here, but I'll just keep on stay off script. Uh, the, but one, one thing that I'm really pleased with is what I hear in the community. Um, I may be one of the longest um, uh, tenured uh, local elected official uh, in the county, and I'm kind of proud of that. But you may remember that um, the illustrious great Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, said all politics is local. And we talked about fundraising. We talked about a number of issues. And I remember very vividly that um, we discussed some strategies um, and strategies both for St. Augustine's as well as Shaw. I was just telling um, a President of Shaw just a little while ago that I'm doing some work, I, I kind of like to walk soft with a big stick. Sometimes people get out too, too far and you get a target on you. But um, uh, looking at um, the, the work that came out of the Urban Institute for um, Shaw and the work that's now being done uh, at St. Augustine and meeting the challenges, there's no question that there are many disparities and things of this sort for us to overcome. But I was speaking with someone as I walked in and I thought about a term, the culture of promise. I actually had the opportunity to be a consultant with the Council of 1890 Chancellors and Presidents, the 18 historically black land grant universities, um, including Tuskegee. And we worked on a collaborative strategic plan I've seen a lot of progress there. But I think the key here, the way I look at where we are, 
that um, we have a community that's prospering in so many ways, um, fastest growing county, over a million in the um, uh, United States. Uh, we have six to seven people coming in every day. And the least of these, and sometimes even our colleges and universities are overlooked. But I'm just real excited in terms of what I hear here. I've worked um, also on the issue around St. Uh, St. Agnes and we've, we've had several plans and those plans have not come quite to fruition. But I truly believe um, in terms of the grants and what I'm hearing in the community, and one of the things that I'm especially doing is trying to connect the business community and those with the circle of influence, understanding what our two historically black universities here are doing and making sure that we dot every I and we cross every T. But uh, it's just exciting to me to be here to see uh, Dr. Maffeo usher in this new idea of hope and enlightenment. Also, the things that I've heard, and um, I try to stay close to those things that really are going to make our county a better place to live. Um, we have a document called A Better Wake. And I said to the manager on yesterday, after looking at a document, one of the best documents I've seen and focusing on issues around health equity, uh, the criminal justice system, upward mobility, and et cetera. So I've seen a whole lot of strategic plans that have been put on the shelf, but they get dusty. So I said to the manager just the other day, no, yesterday, I believe, I said, I reread this document. I said, I did not see um, St. Augustine nah, show sure. all the power, influence, and I guess I would say passion to make sure that uh, your work is not in vain and also that, that, that we can work together for vitality and making sure that we communicate to folks that are disconnected to our value system and know the importance of our two HBCUs. And I truly believe that if we continue to do this and people realize the need and the void. And so let me close by just reading this, I'm making this statement. Um, Dr. McPhail, congratulations to you. I have been in several settings with you. And this same thing applies to Dr. Dillard. And I'm gonna be right there, staying on the wall, looking at the many challenges, but also the great opportunities that we can turn our, our challenges into opportunities. And we wanna make sure that as we work together, that we will continue to make sure with one of the initiatives that we have a better way. The theme is to is undoing racism. And we know that's a tremendous obstacles. Often it's conscious and, and often it's unconscious, but we have the same impact. So again, I make the commitment and I'm with you. May God bless you and keep you and keep you in the palm of his hand. Commissioner West, we thank you. Uh, let's give all of our greeters another round of applause. At this time, we want you to sit back and enjoy a special presentation by the St. Augustine's University Readers Theater Troupe. And then immediately following that presentation, uh, Mackenzie Estep will join us on stage. She is St. Augustine's class of 2023. She is the current Miss SAU. She will introduce our keynote speaker. But first, the St. Augustine's University Readers Theater Troupe. Out of a rock quarry, a university was built. The dark hue of the violet, the snow-white lilies bloom. All hail the blue and white. Good morning, Falcons and friends. Chartered on July 19th, 
1867, St. Augustine's Normal School and Collegiate Institute began her journey. Six months later, her first principal, the Reverend Dr. J. Brenton Smith, officially opened the doors for instruction. Today, 155 years later, and just a few moments from now, St. Augustine's University will officially install her 13th president, Dr. Dr. Christine Johnson, Johnson McPhail. McPhail. And like our first president, the Reverend Dr. J. Brenton Smith, Dr. McPhail, you will not be on this journey alone. We are with you to celebrate the wins. And we are with you to regain strength after moments of despair. So don't worry. We've got you. When plan A doesn't work. We've got you. When plan B doesn't work either. We've got you. And God's got you too. For God's plan is much better than plans A and B anyway. He'll work it out. Dr. McPhail, just know that you're not alone. We've got you. And God's got you too. May the Lord continue to bless you. He's down for passing out blessings. Blessings in green pastures. And beside the still waters. Your soul will be renewed and restored. But every now and then, the waters will get a little rough. And when you look up to the sky and you see the clouds coming. Don't worry. God's got you. Even while you walk down that dark valley of shadows, don't worry. God's got you. And because God's got you, you will fear no evil because the, because Lord, the Lord is your shepherd. Is your shepherd, And you shall not want. He maketh you to lie down in green pastures. God's got you. He leadeth you beside the still waters. God's got you. He sets a table before you. God's got you. In the presence of your enemies. God's got you. And anoints your head with oil. God's got you. Your cup runneth over. God's got you. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. All the days of your life. Because God's got you. And we've got you too. The St. Augustine's University families got, got you, you too. too. And when we suit up for battle, Dr. McPhail, we'll, we, we'll be putting on the whole armor of God because... Because we've got a lot of reimagining to do. Dr. McPhail, God is down for passing out blessings. May your cup runneth over. And over. And over. And over. And over. And over. And over. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, thank you. I am Mackenzie Taylor Estep, a proud daughter of this illustrious institution and the 71st Miss St. Augustine's University. And it is a privilege and an honor to introduce our keynote speaker for today none other than the United States Congresswoman, Dr. Elma Adams, leadership. That's her defining characteristic. HBCUs are her life's work. She knows how to get things done and she does so with style and grace. Dr. Elma S. Adams was elected to her fourth full term representing the 12th Congressional District of North Carolina on November 3rd, 2020. She has not wasted any time getting involved and has made a benevolent impact. Representative Adams serves on the Committee of the Financial Services, Committee on Education and Labor, and the Committee on Agriculture. She holds several leadership roles. As an assistant whip for the Democratic Caucus, chairwoman of the Committee of Education and Labor Subcommittee of Workforce Protections and vice chairwoman of the Committee on Agriculture. So now you understand 
why I was elated to introduce Dr. Adams. Coupled with an impressive background, she fought for myself and for you to be in a better world. But today, she's our keynote speaker. Please join me in welcoming to the stage United States Congresswoman, Dr. Elma Adams. Bless you. Thank you. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is indeed a privilege, and certainly it's my honor to be here. Dr. McPhail, I got your back, too. <laughs> to the illustrious president of St. Augustine's University, Dr. Christine McPhail. To the board of trustees, to Dr. McPhail's family, to the faculty, to the staff, to all of our special guests. To our students and to all of the visiting HBCU family and friends, good morning. Good morning, Falcons. I should say, like, um, good morning, gorgeous. <laughs> you know, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, to, to uh, Mackenzie. Uh, I've had the privilege of meeting her and talking with her, and certainly she's an example of what we do at HBCUs. So thank you for the invitation to be here. You know, you got to know by now that I am HBCU strong. And some folks call me the godmother of HBCUs. So I accept my role with full responsibility to ensure that our schools not only survive, but we got to thrive. You know, so nothing, nothing, nothing could be finer and to be in Carolina at an HBCU, and particularly today in Raleigh, North Carolina, with this extraordinary HBCU, St. Augustine's University. It is a privilege to be here for this celebration, for the installation of the esteemed 13th president, Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail. And you know, I do want to, in my official capacity, first of all, bring you greetings uh, from the more than 800,000 citizens in North Carolina's 12th district, from our Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, to all of my colleagues in the House, to Chairwoman, uh, from Chairwoman Joyce Beatty and 59 members of the Congressional Black Caucus, known as the conscience of the Congress. We gotta have some conscience there. But also greet you as well. Uh, from Johnson C. Smith University that I'm proud to represent in Charlotte and Mecklenburg. And then from my alma mater twice, North Carolina a and State University, Aggie Pride. <laughs> you know, I'm sure like me that you're glad to be out of those Hollywood squares and back out in person after we've been shut down for more than two years and so we've had to delay uh, this event, but we're here today. And I want to congratulate Dr. McPhail on this achievement and on this extraordinary honor. You know, St. Aug, Dr. McPhail and I have a few things in common, both first generation college students, a passion and love for education and love for the Lord and the teaching, a love for HBCUs, and of course, a love for pink and green. <laughs> you know, as a 40-year retired professor of an HBCU, Bennett College in Greensboro, I know a little something about homework. And so after doing my homework and fully researching your president, I discovered in President McPhail a phenomenal woman with impeccable credentials. And so I want to tell you right now that for for this sharecropper's daughter, that, that, that failure is not an option. And you've already had a year to realize that. But because Madam President is all about reimagining excellence, pillars of progress and campus expansion and, and global reach and purpose. And so if you didn't know that, now you do. You know, a proven leader she is grounded in academic excellence, nationally recognized as a thought leader in higher education, multiple decades of extraordinary leadership prepared this president and has undergirded her 
with the knowledge, with the skills and ability to, to set St. Augustine's future on a path of success. You know, today's occasion, occasion in some respects marks new beginnings for our students, for our community and for our state and nation. And yes, the president is on her second round. But it means that this president will pick up the torch to carry on a memorable historic legacy chartered 155 years ago at St. Augustine's Normal School and later St. Augustine's College and today St. Augustine's University. A century plus five decades plus five. What an incredible history. You know, this institution, like so many HBCUs, stood the test of time with, with, with under-resourced under and minuscule budgets, HBCUs like, like St. Augustine have been punching above their weight and they continue to do so much with so little and we're working on that. We need to. You know, after four decades at an HBCU, I am convinced that, that some of the most gifted, and you've heard them here today, some of the most gifted and talented Students, faculty, staff are on these campuses. So, so whatever your affiliation with this historic institution, this historic place is, you have every reason to be proud because you are HBCU strong. You know, Madam President, we have been challenged by this pandemic for more than two years now. And our HBCUs are still struggling to bounce back and and rise from beneath the ashes. So thank you for your incredible leadership so far and your commitment to serve. You know, the pandemic allows us to see things differently. And despite roadblocks or obstacles, HBCUs are still charged to meet the challenges of the 21st century and to prepare students for jobs and for today and tomorrow. You know, I tell our student leaders and our students all the time, it, the future, it's, it's about you. It's about your future, but you are the future, but you are the right now. You know, as the second oldest HBCU in the South, St. Augustine's mission is truly about sustaining a learning and a community in which students can, can prepare academically, socially, and, and spiritually for, for leadership in a complex, diverse, and rapidly changing world. I want to tell the students, all the students who are here, you are HBCU excellent, and you proudly stand on the shoulders of giants who walk these falcon grounds, uh, leaving a legacy for you to emulate and to admire. You know, I too am a proud graduate twice of a historically black college and university. And like many of you, I was the first in my family to go to college. And HBCU took this poor black girl who, who walked those ghetto streets of Newark, New Jersey and made a commitment investment in me, just like St. Augustine is doing for all of the students and all of the faculty and staff. Because HBCUs understand our values and, and help us to realize that students, you're not your circumstance. And where you st start out in life doesn't determine where you're gonna end up, or just how far you can go. You know, our schools believe in opportunity. The opportunity that, that Du Bois spoke about, when he said of all of the civil rights for which the world has struggled and fought for for 500 years, the right to learn is undoubtedly the most fundamental. So President McPhail, thank you for not only believing in that fundamental right, but because of your, your forward thinking goals, that are paralleled uh, with this institution. Dr. McPhail has continued since her arrival over a year ago to move this university forward. The university's emphasis on innovation with a focus on STEAM at, at St. Augustine's, it, it, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. You know, I was pleased to, to join President Biden just a week ago when he visited North Carolina to highlight possibilities in STEAM uh, which the Congressional Bipartisan HBCU Caucus that I founded uh, when I came to Congress eight years ago, and we've been working even since then. But clearly this campus is moving forward 
and thinking outside of the box. Why? Because you have such a leader as Dr. McPhail. And for the first time in its 155-year history, this institution under Dr. McPhail formed the first HBCU women's rowing team in, in the country, not, not in the state, but in the country. Now, that clearly is imagination. Now, it used to be that these athletic opportunities could only be found on Ivy League campuses. But look at what we have here. And now to be able to, to have those available for students at, at St. Augustine's means that the doors of opportunity that were once closed in those fields are, are now open to young people who look like me and, and many of the folks who, who are here. You know, I'm impressed, President McPhail, by your forward thinking, your, your creative initiative, because it's clear to me that you, my sister, understand the concept of, of, of teamsmanship, or rather womenship. You know, the bottom line is united teamwork. And that's what's needed to move the university forward and to help this president accomplish what's needed for this institution and our community. You know, Falcons, if you think about St. Augustine's women's rowing team, let's do that for a moment. Let's, let's reimagine and understand that, that to accomplish what this institution and the students in their care will need will be based on the realization that we must all be rowing in the same direction. You know, I'm also aware that, that Dr. McPhail's work in academia with community colleges, and glad to see all of our community college folk here as well, four-year colleges and universities over the years have been about ensuring that institutions, and I'm using your words now, Dr. McPhail, breaking down silos to create strong experiences for students. St. Augustine's has a history of creating strong experiences for students and was the first HBCU in the nation to have its own commercial TV and radio station. You know, this institution has used their microphone and, and the megaphone to mass communicate with the world. And that's really what it's all about. Because with today's technology, you know, there's more access to what's happening in the world. Think about it, the power of social media, social, economic, and political platforms like Twitter and, and TikTok and Facebook. I know a little bit about some of those. <laughs> <laughs> which means that messages can be shared instantly and those same messages can be influential in producing change instantly. Just think about it. You know, HBC leaders are continuing to break down silos that sees everything. You know, one who observes the, the motion of everyone else and gives direction to the team. Here's our director over here. You know, everybody must listen to the captain's orders, row together in the same motion in order to keep things moving. And so the captain knows where she wants the, the boat to go. Uh, you know, believe me, you've heard it. She does know. So if you're in the front of the boat, uh, you've got to trust everybody behind you that they're rowing in the same direction. And, you know, don't rock the boat, baby. But <laughs> as HBCUs, like St. Augustine's look to prepare students for the 21st century, to address the challenges ahead, accountability will be key. Accountability from, from all of us, from all of the stakeholders who share in the work of this school's success. And Congress too must be accountable. We must be an accountable stakeholder. And we've got to start rowing in the same direction and break down some of those silos as well. Silos of, of failing infrastructure on our campuses, silos of, of unequal funding, silos lacking 1890 land grant matches from state governments. Those silos of the bigotry, of low expectations, silos of crushing student debt, totaling $1.8 trillion. I'm asking the president, relieve $50,000 of the debt for these students. You know, across this country, across this country right now, over 100 HBCUs, there's $25 billion in deferred maintenance, and the cost is climbing. And that's why I filed H.R. 3294, the Bipartisan Ignite HBCU Excellence Act, 
to address those infrastructure needs. You know, HBCU family, we, we, if, we, if we continue to ignore the problem, we, we will not do justice to, to adequately prepare the, 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 the next Katanji Brown Jackson, uh, the new justice on the Supreme Court. What about that? Shirley Chisholm said, if you don't have a seat at the table, she said, bring in a folding chair, but we've got a seat on the bench right now. You know, the first black woman to nominate, nominate to, to, to be on the, the Federal Reserve, uh, Lisa Cook, we, we're not going to be able to prepare those Roz Brewers, uh, who is the CEO of, of Walgreens. So we've got to stay woke to ensure that, that the institutions of higher learning that educate our most underprivileged students have access to equal funding and equal support. And I'm going to say that again, equal funding and equal support. You know, the truth is we're on a campus named after St. Augustine, a campus whose institution's motto, truth shall set you free. You know, expounding for just a moment on, on truth. St. Augustine said, the truth is like a lion. You don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It'll defend itself. So the truth be told, HBCUs have proven themselves for almost two centuries, and we don't have to apologize for anyone. You know, we are the places that are responsible for 25% of African-American STEM graduates. We are the places where more than, than half of, of, of America's black teachers and dentists attend school. Where tomorrow's pastors and teachers and business leaders are being molded and mentored. Truth is, St. Aug, historically black colleges and universities continue uh, to, to contribute more than $14 billion to our economy. And despite these facts, policies are written to continually underfund and undervalue them. Dr. McPhail, we've got to continue to, to reimagine what could be, what should be, and what we know can be by breaking down those silos of inequity and inequality and discrimination. Like you, I am a dreamer too. And you know, I dream of a day soon and very soon when I can walk on HBCU campuses and see multiple cranes in the sky, erecting new buildings and renovating those old historic structures that are in need of restoration right now. Because some of our buildings are as old as our schools. You know, St. Augustine has served this community, this city and, and the state now for 155 years and our nation owes a debt of gratitude to, to, to this institution. You know, we've got to be rowing in the same direction because failure is not an option. Too many families are counting on this HBCU and HBCUs across this state and this nation. And, and there's another 155 years of accomplishments on the horizon, but we all have to be dreamers too. Eleanor Roosevelt said that, that the future the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Well, I believed in you, our promise, and that's how I got the, my future act signed into law in 2019. You remember that? There's a quarter of a billion permanent dollars for HBCUs and MSIs. But you know, we've got, yeah, we, we need to clap on that. But we have to, we have to keep dreaming and reimagining those possibilities and what we know our schools can do. And folks, we got big dreams to accomplish. So we better be rowing in the same direction. You know, in Congress, I'm fighting right now uh, to, to ignite HBCU excellence through a bill. That's the name of the bill, Ignite HBCU Excellence Act. And it's gonna provide millions of federal dollars annually to HBCUs to rebuild the infrastructure and to rebuild, to develop new buildings and laboratories. So we've got to keep dreaming. One of my legacy pro, uh, pro projects in Congress is around black maternal health. And I've been pleased to see the vice president amplify it in her work. So imagine for a moment, a nursing school, a medical school at St. Augustine's University. Uh, imagine a place Madam President, where, where, where mothers can come in this region and get prenatal and, 
and postnatal care that they deserve in the richest country in the world. You know, there is a black maternal health crisis in this country. Black women are dying three to four times the, the rate of white women, and 60% of those deaths are preventable. You know, the problem is worse today than it was 25 years ago, and our black mamas can't wait. You know, on St. Augustine's campus, our new president, Dr. McPhail, will take us all forward as, as captain of this boat, but she'll need the help of all of us working together alums, community partners, businesses, corporate partners, and we've got to be rowing in the same direction. And students, we're gonna need you to don't get it and go, get it and give, continue to give back. You know, Madam President, you were sent here for such a time as this. And students, your presence here is not by accident either be be because you could have been someplace else. But thanks be to the good Lord, thanks be to your parents and those who support you and your faculty and your staff that you are on this campus. You were placed here at this historic institution for such a time as this. Because you are HBCU strong, that makes excellence in your DNA. And so you're gonna be doing great things, we know that, because you are HBCU excellence. And remember Emerson, Remember Emerson who said that, that, that most of the shadows in one's lifetime come from standing in one's own sunshine. So I would say to all of us, don't allow anyone to stand in your sunshine and don't allow anybody else to block your view. So Madam President, keep rowing to uplift the next generation of, of Falcon leaders. Continue to break down those silos so that they don't block your view. And you know, at a time when leadership is so desperately needed, service is the rent we pay for living on this earth. And so all of you who serve in whatever capacity, elected, appointed, or wanna be, thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you for keeping your rent fully paid up. You know, I, I just want to, to end by saying, this is a wonderful community. I spent 20 years in Raleigh serving in the North Carolina House. I spent 40 years on the campus of Bennett College as an administrator, as well as a, a faculty member. So I wanna just say to all of the faculty and staff for all that you do, I know what you do. I've been there, I've done that. But I'll say to this entire community, to all of the Falcons and, and those who are here today and those who are listening, let's make sure that we continue to not only support this president, but be there for her. Let's make sure that we continue to, to build those bridges and form those bonds for her. And let's make sure as a community that we continue to plant seeds of progress because we know where we can go. Because somebody once said that a community can only grow great when old men and old women plant trees under which we know we'll never sit. Thank you, God bless. Congresswoman Alma Adams, Congresswoman, we thank you for that message. We thank you for the, for the work you've done on campus at HBCUs, for the work you've done on behalf of HBCUs uh, at the State House, down on Jones Street, and now on Capitol Hill in Washington. As an, as an HBCU alum myself, I'm grateful uh, for you and certainly an inspiration to get and give and not get and go. So we thank you for that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got some business to get down to. It is time to prepare for the formal investiture ceremony. The Right Reverend Samuel Rodman will lead us. Madam President, the Board of Trustees trusting in the guidance of the Holy Spirit and years ago that St. Augustine's University 
was founded by the partnership of my predecessors in the Episcopal Diocese of North Carolina and the Freedmen's Bureau. And it is a complicated history that we cannot forget as we again stand today, as the Reverend Dr. Paul Smith reminded us, in the shadow of powers that still seek to divide us. In the past, our church has hidden behind a whitewashed account of history that credits the paternal benevolence of my forebearers who decided to help black people in North Carolina following the Civil War. But the reality is our church was more than complicit in the institution of slavery that made this university, St. Augustine's, necessary. Many of our bishops and priests were slave owners and shamefully defended the enslavement of kidnapped Africans with heretical theologies and scriptural cherry picking. Some of the largest slave owners in the state were members and benefactors of the Episcopal Church. As the Reverend Hershey often reminds us, if the white benefactors of St. Augustine's University were really invested in God's justice, they might have worked to send God's sons and daughters who endured the evils of slavery to Chapel Hill with the sons and daughters of slave owners in the 1860s. Yet today, we give God thanks. For the God we serve is a God of justice. Throughout history, God has been faithful. What men meant for evil, God made for good. Formerly enslaved and freed people took the product of heretical white supremacy theology and turned it into the dream of God's people that is now St. Augustine's University. The theme today of our university is reimagine. It's also the call of the Church of Jesus Christ. It is the call of our Savior that he puts on each of our hearts and every one of us to reimagine. Reimagine this tired, bruised, and broken world. Reimagine what beloved community and God's justice can look like. We are here to join as co-laborers with God and with Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail to do the mighty and urgent work of reimagining St. Augustine's University, to serve our inspiring students, to partner with the community around us, our neighbors, and to fulfill the promise of justice at the heart of the founding of our university. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we are grateful that this great university, built from the inspiration and persistence of many, and sustained for more than 150 years by those whose aspirations and prayers are now one with the brick and stone of our beloved St. Augustine's University. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you, President McPhail, that in your leadership, in your work, and in all things, you may serve God's purpose and fulfill the promise of God's justice in this calling and in this office. Amen. And in the name of this body gathered here today, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and community members, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I commend you to this work and pledge to you our prayers, our encouragement, and our full and faithful support. We will now continue with the presentation of the symbols of authority before the swearing in. And I ask Chairman James Perry to begin with the presentation of the chain of office.
I now call on trustee Joe Cheshire to present the University Mace. Trustee Tony Knox to present the Episcopal seal. Trustee George Brooks to present the university seal. And now trustee Brian Bulware to present the university bell. And now I invite Justice Perry and the Reverend Hershey Millette Stevens to come forward for the swearing in and join us. And President McPhail, if you would place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Mr. Chairman. I present Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail to serve as the 13th president of St. Augustine's University. Dr. McPhail, please respond to the following in the affirmative. Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, the board of trustees of St. Augustine's University, under the charge and guidance of Almighty God, has elected you to serve as the 13th president of an institution whose foundation is built upon the Christian faith. I ask you in the presence of God and his witnesses, do you solemnly pledge to faithfully and fully accept and discharge the responsibilities of your office to the fullness of your spiritual, intellectual, and physical capacity? I do. Chairman Perry, by the power vested in you, and on your behalf, as chairman of the Board of Trustees of St. Augustine's University, I declare Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, the 13th president of this institution, with all the rights, duties, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto.
our prayer and our dedication from Reverend Martini Shaw. I'm gonna ask us to stand for this prayer. I'm gonna ask Dr. McPhell if she will come over here close to me. And I'm gonna ask us to raise our hands during the prayer. Uh, first, just let me um, thank you so much for this opportunity to join you and to bring the continued and unwavering support of the Episcopal Church. This is the day to look to the future with hope and faith and courage and determination. This is the day to give thanks for the skills and leadership of Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, now inaugurated as the 13th president of this university. Oh God, continue to dedicate her to the fullness of your service. Oh God, shower her with your grace and your mercy and your love. Oh God, continue to empower her to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh God, continue to order her steps. Oh God, continue, continue to protect her from all hurt, harm, and danger. Oh God, continue to have her to know that she can do all things through Christ who strengthens her. May she continue, oh God, to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to lead with vision, wisdom, and strength, and conviction, and dignity. May she lead with the power to reimagine, reimagine the past, reimagine the present, reimagine the future. Oh God, bless Dr. Merfell with your abundant love and bless St. Augustine's University as it continues to equip students academically, socially, and spiritually for leadership. Go blue and white. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. The Reverend Canon Martini Shaw, we thank you for that awesome prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have witnessed a milestone in the history of St. Augustine's University this afternoon. Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail is now installed as the 13th president of St. Augustine's University. We have heard some powerful prayers this morning and afternoon, some powerful performances as well. But the one thing we still need to soothe our spiritual soul is a member of the Winans family to serenade us on this historic morning. So let us celebrate with a guest who needs no introduction. Please welcome Grammy award-winning artist, B.B. Winans. Wind on me, I asked myself, was the song I sang off key? Hold back those tears and convince yourself 
it just wasn't meant to be. Some wish upon a star in hope, one day that wish comes true. But I'm asking God with much regard, are the dreams I want taboo? Born for this, destined for greatness. Are you prepared for this? His strength for your weakness. Found that life's not always easy. Question if it's worth the risk. Open your heart and he will lead you. And yes, you were born for this. I will not go Cause they told me no There's nothing out there for me But lying in my bed Couldn't get it out of my head Am I where I'm supposed to be? Can't I? Let the words control my life. My pride I will defend. It. And if I work hard, want to take me far. And in the end, I will win. You're, you're born for this. Destined for greatness. You were prepared for this. His strength for your weakness. Life's not always easy. Question if it's worth the risk. But follow his word and he will lead you. And yes, you were born for this. Now if I stand here and wait, my dreams will die. Can't be afraid to try again and fly and if I ever lose my way because the heart is torn never let me question why the very reason you were born born for this this for a second. That was good. A few seconds to gather ourselves after that. <laughs> Dr. McPhail, you feel comfortable with this? Because we'll wait for you. With this microphone. Okay. It's your choice. You are the president. It is your time now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 13th president of St. Augustine's University, Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail. talk about surprises. They sometimes say at the university can't keep anything from me. Uh, I want to say here before all of this audience and, and, and God, you guys did keep this from me. Board of Trustees, alumni, distinguished guests, my family, would you all just stand up? If some of you all know I'm number nine of 10 children. And some of the folks out of Texas, California, Charlotte, all of them are here with me today. 
family, adopted family. So I, I'm so glad that you guys could be here and uh, see what your grandma and your granddaddy did. So thank you all for coming. My son, my daughter, grandchildren, uh, and brothers and sisters, those by my mother and those by other mothers as well. So thank you for today. Um, I have seven minutes. Okay, you guys can hold on a little longer, just a little longer. I'm honored to serve as St. Augustine's 13th president. But even more, even more than that, I'm honored to be a part of this outstanding learning organization here in Raleigh, North Carolina. A place where people can continually uh, to create the results that they truly desire. A place where new and expansive patterns of thinking are nurtured and where collective aspiration is set free. You heard about the first woman roaring team. I did not think of that. But what I do think about every single day as the president of this university is the safety and welfare of our faculty, our staff, and our students. I do think about, and I take responsibility for, is working with the teams at St. Augustine's University to create an environment where people can dream. The Roaring Team, as this pandemic on October the 15th in 2020 claimed the lives of Dr. Irvin Presley McPhail, my husband. He claimed this COVID, this COVID came the lives, the father of Camila and Ralph. The COVID claimed Justin, Jordan, Chase, Connor, and Julian's grandfather. This COVID claimed the lives of many of, of you who knew Irving McPhail as a dynamic supporter of higher education uh, throughout the world. He lived and breathed higher ed. So you see, this endurance that we're going through right now, this reimagining that we're going through right now is very personal to me. I don't have a choice. This is my assignment and I understand it. I understand. Endurance and this resilience of our learning organization it's what brings us joy. Our family turned our pain into purpose when we came over here uh, at St. Augustine's University. So this work is not optional to us. It's who we are and it's what we do. And yes, we are a university of first. You've heard about it this morning. When we were founded in 1867, the founders sought a way they imagined that they would establish a campus for education for freed slaves. They reimagined plantation land and built into it, into a beautiful campus that we enjoy today. They built this place with their imagination and hands, brick by brick, sometimes bringing bricks to class with them. They laid the foundation for what we're standing on today. And to that end, we enjoy an organization of learning. But we didn't stop there. We became the first HBCUs you've heard to own and operate a radio station that you're going to hear a lot about as we move forward in this work. And I got to tell you, a learning organization, we don't grow weary. We just keep on marching on. We grow bolder with each step. We peer out into the horizon and gain energy from the challenges that wait us. We've come too far to turn around. We've come too far to hear the noise about failure. It doesn't exist for us. As passionate as we are about our history, I'm equally, and you heard today from many of our faculty and our staff and our students that we are energized. We are fired up and ready to go about reimagining. We are our ancestors' wildest dreams. We are bad, bold, and powerful. When I envision the work before us, I view it through several lenses. One, about the economic impact of St. Augustine's University in Raleigh in this region. 
We are 100 million strong over here. And then we're growing. Watch for the next chapter. I see a learning organization when I think about reimagining what we do. I see a learning organization sprawling with opportunity and boundless intellectual energy. In the spirit of our founders and our ancestors, I see a campus expansion that includes centers for social justice, entrepreneurship, research. We're gonna study health disparities like you never heard before because that's our mission. And if we don't fail our mission, our mission won't fail us. And that's what we do. We're in the legacy building era at St. Augustine's University. I see a virtual campus that reaches out to those countries that you heard Jamie talk about earlier today. We are reaching out all over the world. We're setting up those partnerships. Yes, we are reimagining St. Agnes Hospital. Higher education that created HBCUs. And that's what, what we did, we flipped it. We flipped it. Because you wouldn't let us in, we decided to go out with HBCUs and now it's our time. Thank you, Congresswoman, for putting it out there in a way that no one has ever done before. This HBCU is the democracy of higher education. Don't forget it. The doors are open for everybody. I believe it is important to look at history, but we can't stop there. We have to live in the present and define the future. When I think about defining the future, and when I came to St. Augustine, Augustine University, I was reminded of my segregated high school experience in Tyler, Texas, where we didn't know we were segregated. That was just a way of life. I grew up thinking everybody was black. I didn't know I was poor until I went to college and took a sociology class. I started calling daddy and mama back home. I said, our social economic index is very low. He said, what? <laughs> My daddy said, all you got to do is have a year's worth of living in the bank. You're going to be all right, baby girl. So that's been my philosophy. It goes below that. I got to go out and get a second job. So today is our chance to define our present so that we can be clear about the future we desire. At St. Augustine University, we look at our experience through three lenses. We know that we have an economic impact in the city of Raleigh, in the region, North Carolina, and throughout America. So we want to expand our economic impact. We know that we are a political statement. HBCUs are political statements. And we are carrying it out, Congresswoman. We are stepping into that place and being more aggressive with our conversations about social justice. And we see ourselves as social justice institutions. And we're going to walk that out. And then the third lens is our culture. Our culture. The impact of our culture on the world is so huge, it's so important. And we thank our alumni, our faculty, and our staff, and our supporters all over the world for helping us continue with that message. If you haven't got the idea yet that we're in a renaissance period, and St. Augustine's in it uh, now, get that message today, because we are. When we think about the renaissance period, we talked about scholars together, rebuilding, thinking about culture and expanding it. We have to harken back to the times because change is here. You heard democracy talk about the change. We're walking change out every single day. Let there be no mistake. We want everyone to connect with St. Augustine's University and our sister institution at Shaw. We are family. We are in different locations, but Dr. Dillard and I get it. We get the message that we work together and we are sister institutions and we are sisters, leaders, creating teaching and learning environments that can advance things that we want to do on institutions, but also in this nation. So you're hearing it from us today. New buildings will be directed and yes, we expect checks to come our way. Uh, new faces, if you were 
wondering about the product. You heard our uh, new elect student president say he is there. He is already uh, engaged. We are moving forward. We're going to use our time, our talents, and our gifts uh, to reimagine St. Augustine's. We're going to stay focused on the mission because it works. And I'm going to leave you with this statement. If we don't fail our mission as HBCUs, our mission won't fail us. And it will not fail America. HBCUs are, um, are an American invention. And we should be democratic in everything that we do. So I do accept the assignment, trustees. You can count on me to lead with your directions about how we build upon our legacy. How do we advance HBCUs? How do we hold true to the history of St. Augustine's University? I got my assignment and I'm gonna walk it out. The 13th president of St. Augustine's University, Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail. She laid out the vision and she has sworn to get us there. Dr. McPhail, if you, as you have, have a seat, there are some special guests in the audience, as you know, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority wanted to have a word. Uh, your sorors are coming. They'd like, a, they'd like to say a few things. Any AKAs in the audience, you are welcome to the front.
had a little wardrobe change. That's what you do. That's what you do. I am honored. I am honored to be here. And I am in back reading um, about this wonderful, great woman. I decided that we have to be friends. I can learn a lot from you. And at my age, I've learned, you know, you never stop learning. So I love to surround myself around smart, brilliant people. So we gonna be friends. <laughs> There's a song that I always love um, to sing because it ministers to me. And I want to encourage you that after you've done all you can, said after you've done all you can, may get weak sometimes, but after you've done all you can. When your strength runs out and you've done all, all you can, you look to the hills with come with your help after you've done all you can, you already know you stand, stand. So tell me, what do you do when you've done all you can? Seems like it's never enough. Tell me, what do you say when your friends turn away and you're alone, so all alone? Tell me what do you, do you give when you've given your all? Seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through. And after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me how, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me how do you deal with the shame? Tell me how can you smile? when your heart has been broken and filled with pain oh filled with pain tell me what do you give what do you give when you've given your all and it seems like you can't make it through well you can just stand when there's Nothing left to do, you just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. And after you've done all you can, you just stand. Hey, be sure. Be not entangled in the bondage again. You just stand and endure. I'm here to let you know God has a purpose and God has a plan. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like you can't make it through. Well, you just stand. You stand. You stand. Don't you dare give up. You walk through 
the storm and we walk through the rain and we walk through the hurt and through the pain oh you square your shoulders and you look to the heels my help cometh from the lord it cometh from the lord you stand on his promise you stand on his promise and he will never fail he'll never fail he never will know so i'm telling you after after you've gone through the storm uh, oh god knows all about our every storm every storm oh but they come just to make you strong uh, oh after after you've gone through the rain you've gone through the rain i'm here to tell you you just stand on his promise because uh, his his promise will never fail he'll never fail he will never fail so after you've done all you can after you've done all all you can after doctor you've done all you can you just stand oh, 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 doctor you just stand thank you thank you is that okay boy honorary falcon is that okay all right then i am appreciate you brother Why don't you hold on to it? You're going to need it pretty soon. B.B. Winans, thank you. Yeah. Even got an outfit change out of the man. Dude did it all. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Um, you, 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 you heard me say, tell Chairman Perry to hold on to that mic. He's going to come up for closing remarks in just a moment. But first, I will not skip over the chamber singers. One more time, our alma mater, the blue and white, and then Chairman Perry. I know the time is late and I won't take a lot of time, but I want the, the members of my board to stand, those who had the wisdom and the insight to select Dr. Mithail as our 13th president. Stand, stand. <laughs> <laughs> Just stand. And, and there, there are lots of reasons why they are standing because we had to basically listen to Brother BB's uh, message. You know, Brother BB, I want to thank you because I was told that you could sing a, a phone book and it would maybe be a top hit. <laughs> I understand that now. Um, well, 
you've heard a lot of things. I'm going to let you in on a little secret <clears throat> that many of you may not know. Dr. Dr. McPhail, Christine McPhail, is the one who recommended Urban Preston McPhail to be the president of St. Augustine. Now, I don't believe in... I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in providence. And th there's a reason you were here, and as the brother said, you were born for this. And we appreciate it, and we love you. We got your back. <laughs> uh, the history of St. Augustine's University, as I'm a proud 1966 graduate. Don't try to figure how old I am. <laughs> it's pretty old. The investiture of Dr. Christian McPhail as our 13th president is the moment that will forever be etched in the stones that tell our story. With this moment come massive responsibility. The sheer size of Dr. McPhail's mandate is precisely why she is clearly the right person for the moment. With President McPhail, we have begun resurgence. With President McPhail, we will, ex we will be expanding. And together with President McPhail, we come to reimagine. And while you remain on your feet, our benediction, my brother Michael Dublin, Sr. The benediction is a blessing bestowed upon you as you leave. The blessing we have already received of just being here today. I just want to remind you that you are a blessing to those who are not part of any fraternity, any sorority. They will never be known as having accomplished anything notable, they won't be able to reimagine, but they work on your campuses. They live in your neighborhoods. They serve you when you go out to dinner and they're part of your everyday life. They are the men and women who struggle for every breath of life, every dollar, and when their loved ones die from COVID, not many people will know it. Some may not even be able to bury them, but they are as much a part of God's heart as you and I are. We have come out of poverty and we have a body of work. We've done some great things, but our greatest blessing will go back and smile and acknowledge and remember those who don't gather with us. Remember their struggle for life every day and never, ever take them for granted. Never leave them out of your prayers and remembering that when Jesus came, he came for them as well. Don't forget where we came from and don't forget where we must go. Merciful God, what a day it has been. What a powerful day, what a love and compassion and this particular day, when you blessed Dr. Christine Johnson McPhail, you blessed her from the womb to be where she is today. And we're asking that we together will all go back to where we've come from, remembering who else you may have already blessed and be a venue, an avenue, a person who reaches back and reaches down, that they too may know the Christ, that they may know hope, and they may know joy, and they may know legacy, and they may reimagine their lives. Some pray in Christ's name, others pray their own way. But however we come, we just praise your name today. Amen. Amen. Brother Dublin, thank you. Dr. McPhail has the bell. It is now time for the ringing of the university bell. Thank you. 